And this computer is going to be old enough that it needs new thermal grease anyway. Hello everyone. As you can see, I have an HP Pavilion G7 laptop here. Now, I already have an HP G7 disassembly video on my channel. But it's from three or so years ago. Actually, it's one of the first videos that I posted to the YouTube channel. And I think that I can do a little better this time. Partly just because the last time it was a hinge mount repair. This time, however, we have to do a CPU fan replacement. So, we have to tear it all the way down. <clears throat> so, I've covered up the customer's private information. Uh, which is really just, you know, the customer's name. And we're going to take this plate off of here to start with, because that's what you always do, is you take the battery out and take any back plates like this off and just go from there. So, what do we have here? A lot of stuff. Um, as usual, take out pretty much all of the screws. Now, there's this sunlight here, and I know it might be a little distracting, but I don't feel like closing the window. There's a nice amount of light. Um, the customer is missing... The customer is missing a screw here. I may try to replace that later, but take the screws out. Take them all out. It's not that hard. Uh, there's a screw here that doesn't belong here. This thing is zoomed out as far as it can go. All right. I think this is looking... I'm taking the CD-DVD drive screw out here so I can go ahead and get it out. It looks like all these screws are the same size. That's good. There are no screws under the drive. Let's just go around and take them all out. Pretty easy stuff, really. Actually, that DVD drive screw is shorter, so we'll keep it separate. It's important to see stuff like that. Alright, moving along. That screw is gone too. This guy travels around a lot with this computer. So it sees... Is there not one there either? No, there's not a screw there either. Okay, so... One here. I love this, don't you? Alright. Keep going around. We also will have to take some screws out that were under this cover and some that were under the battery. But I'll go ahead and get these outside edge screws and whatnot first. I think that one's already gone. Okay, next let's do the battery ones, which may be shorter. They are indeed shorter. They are the same length as the DVD drive screws. Mm, excuse me. That was, uh, that was a late lunch coming back to say hi, I suppose. Alright, the ones under here are the same size as the exterior ones. There's a screw here. Um, you may not be able to see that, actually. Let me get you some more brightness. Um, there's one here. There is one here. It's marked with a keyboard logo, if you look there. Yeah. Come on. Let go. Let go. There you go. There's one over here by the hard drive cable. Okay. And another thing you're going to need to do is take the wireless card loose because that goes into a socket on the board and its screw is the same length as the CD drive screw. So that's fun. Yep, the wireless card needs to come out. You do not have to take the antennas off of it, though, as far as I can tell, anyway. The hard drive needs to come out, so get this cable, pull up on the black tab, you may have to wiggle a little, and the whole drive will just lift right out, with the cable still attached. Okay. It looks like that's going to do it for screws on the bottom. Unless there's one more over there. There's one more in the battery bay that I missed. Right over here. Alright. 
Eh, just, just throw the thing, why don't you? Yep. But all those battery bay screws are kind of short. All right, let's flip it over and paddle faster. I hear banjo music. I wonder if that means that they're doing a getaway and yeah anyway this keyboard I don't like these keyboards um, this is the kind that has little clips you have to poke them in fact let me see if I can give you a better view of what's going on here so you put it in like this they're reachable from underneath as well but what I like to do is just poke the clips so that they push back get in there and pry the keyboard up and once it's up you can just push to release the clips see the notch you can very clearly see the notch um, and there are how many come on you can let go now and there should be one more over here yes okay there are five total clips that you'll have to deal with and then flip this up here that will release your keyboard what else what else um, over here flip this up this goes where does it go uh, it goes over to the a board over here um, underneath this if you if you look carefully underneath this cable there is also a DC jack thing but you can get that later um, flip this up flip this up and flip this up and also flip this power one up yeah this is a little gross because it's near the fan and the fans probably full of junk fun little trick by the way if you take packing tape take a strip of packing tape pull like this rip all right you can take packing tape and you can use it to kind of pick up all this gritty stuff it'll become less and less sticky as you do it but yeah it'll let you pick up all kinds of gooey nasty dirty stuff so that it doesn't fall all over the place when you finally do get into it and tear it apart. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Lovely. Yeah, that's absolutely disgusting. You don't really have to look very hard to see how nasty that is. Yuck. Oh, let go. Let go. Alright. There's a screw right here. Right here by these uh, cables, it's the same length as the battery bay ones. And there are no other screws marked. So at this point, you should be able just to get this whole top to come up. See this corner? Oh, the corner's coming up. Yeah, I guess you have to do it from the back. All right. All the way from the back like that. So be it. I mean, I'll do what I have to do. But that... Yeah, that was stuck because the speakers are loose, apparently. All right. Well, there you go. So, there's our top. Let's get this pivoted back. Wireless card is just dangling freely. All right. Oh, yeah, that, that gross hinge mount. Oh, that is that is already cracking. It's the same problem as with all of these. The hinge mount is just giving way. So this fan needs to be replaced. It is very loud apparently, but it's not making any noise for me. But I um, went ahead and ordered a fan. So we already have that handy. There is a connector here pull up on the tab there's a flip lock connector here you can just flip it up pull it out 
the speaker connector here. Wiggle it back and forth gently. If you have fingernails, use those. Um, the display cable is here. That is a little bit harder to get out, actually. Yeah. I am not entirely sure. Yep, it pulls up. There we go. Just pulls right up. And there is the DC jack wire is over here. It's, it's hard to see, but it is here, I promise. And it's very tight. Um, might need to use tools to pry that out. Rather than doing it with your fingers. Oh no, that's not that's not gonna be easy. Okay. I'm gonna violate some things and uh yeah. We're not doing it that way. Let's get this screw out that holds the motherboard in here. Okay. Maybe we can get a little bit more latitude to work with if we do that. Also, it looks like we may not have to take the DC cable loose in the first place. Eh, no, we don't. We can leave it, so you don't have to deal with that. Okay, there are a couple of things going on here. Um, one, you have to remove the heat sink because the fans attached to it. And this computer is going to be old enough that it needs new thermal grease anyway. So let's go ahead and remove our heat sink. Be, ge be gentle with it. You don't want to break anything. Eh. That one screw came out. It's like the others have retention rings, but that one doesn't. Interesting. I wonder. I wonder why. This feels like it's screwed down. Is it screwed down? Is it... Is it glued? What's going on there? Well, I see no screws. So it must just be adhesive mounted. But well, let's check around. No? No, I think it's just stuck. It's just glued down. That's terrible. Really terrible. So that means the only way to get it off is to poke at it here. Yep, get something in there to break the seal. There we go. Yep, some kind of yucky tape, I think, is holding it down. There you go. Yep, that's exactly what it was. And there's a connector for the fan right there. Now, yeah, that's gross. Um, now we're going to need a very, very small Phillips head. So... Let's see what I have over here. I don't think a zero will do. I think we need a double zero for these, but let's see. Oh, nope. A zero. A zero, not a double zero. The zero worked. So let's go ahead and take these screws out that hold the fan. There are two tiny, tiny screws that hold the fan. They're diagonally across from each other. And then there's a clip here and there's a clip over here and there is a clip over here and that releases the fan oh dear god that is unpleasant so I'm starting to think that maybe this computer might have had some minor heat issue you know call me crazy but yeah, there's something about pulling a carpet out of your heat sink that doesn't exactly give you much confidence. Anyway, I'm going to blow this out into a trash can. That did absolutely nothing. Let's check the part. Make sure the parts match. They don't have to be identical. They just have to match for mounting and wiring. It looks like... The replacement is probably going to work. Okay. 
So let's go ahead and put our replacement part here. Get it to kind of fall in between the clips there. I don't think it has the actual clips. No, this one does not have the clips. The other one did, this one does not. So the best you can probably do is the two tiny screws and that's it. Two tiny screws. So get your tiny screw on your magnetic screwdriver because you should totally have one of those. You can magnetize any screwdriver with a permanent magnet, by the way. Fun little fact. But you're going to need to tighten because it has to cut new threads into the new fan. You're going to need to tighten these tiny screws pretty, pretty hard. And you don't want to manhandle it, but you still need to tighten it. Um, just wipe the heat sink paste off of this. Get as much as you can off. It may not be perfect, but it doesn't really have to be. Also, um, because this doesn't have the clips, we'll do something about that in a minute. Go ahead and get the goop off of your CPU as well. Okay. While you're in here, you should go ahead and take a small flathead. I can use my pry tool. Put it here. Turn it to release the CPU. See? And just put the CPU immediately back in the socket and turn it again. That reseats it. Refreshes the electrical connections. Now, I use Arctic Silver MX4 because I can get these bulk tubes of it relatively cheaply and the thermal conductivity of it is rather nice. So we're going to put a little bit here, put a little bit here on this CPU. Ready? Yeah. Blorp. Yeah. There's a little bit of air in there because I had overdone it on a previous application. The only thing I don't like about this particular thermal compound is this. It, uh, it, it tends to ooze for a long time after you give it a little push. And it makes application very frustrating. So that's why there's a tendency for me to have air at the end of the tube because I'll pull it back. And then I'll just sort of poke. There really is probably a bit too much on here. It's almost impossible to suck the stuff back up though, so. Let's push this down and see what kind of application we get. Squish. Uh, that's uh, pretty good. Considering I didn't tighten it, that's pretty good. Okay. Let's, uh, before we push it down and start screwing it down permanently, Let's go ahead and see if we can ignore my phone. It's so annoying. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can get this connector plugged in. Doesn't really seem to want to go. Eh. I may have it backwards, actually. Yeah, it looks like I have it backwards. That's why it doesn't want to go. Reverse it. Put it in the right way, you fool. So tiny. It's such a tiny, tiny connector, and it's really grouchy about going back in. You all good? Yep, yeah, it looks like it's in there correctly. So let's go ahead and put this down. Get that screw in. So we have a new fan. We cleaned a mess out of the heat sink. I know I'm not following the number scheme. Sorry, um, just, you just do a cross pattern, it should be fine. Actually, that's a little too tight for this. Let's, uh, let's get this over here. Yeah. Come on, catch, there you go.
Okay. That's good. That's good. Okay. Alright, let's start putting things back where they belong. Alright, let me get you to where you can see what I'm doing here. A little bright. Let's uh, calm things down a bit. What do you say? Here we go. Alright. So, get the display cable out of the way. Get this cable, this cable, this cable. They all need to be kind of out of the way. Um, yeah. I don't remember if the Wi-Fi cable was on top or not, but... The name of the game here is just get all the wires out of the way so you can put the board back where it belongs. Okay, let's go ahead and secure the board with the screw that we took out here. Uh, no, it's not quite through some of these, is it? You have to get it to go through all these. Ah, there we go. Everything just kind of fell in as it should. Good job. I'm telling myself, good job. What a what a genius I am. Woohoo. <clears throat> so we'll put this flip lock connector here back. Get in there. There you go, big boy. Ooh, the monkey sound. That means I got a message. The chime also means I got a message. Yep. Okay. All right. There's the flip lock connector over here. Which is kind of grouchy. Come on. There you go. They can be a real pain sometimes. Okay. The display connector needs to go back where you found it. There we go. Um, let's see. This thing is, is showing classic HP G7 hinge signs. Um, I'm not sure if I want to epoxy that or not, though. It's going to be a real pain to epoxy it regardless. So... I will tighten the screws. Yep, they are in fact loose. I will tighten them. I will replace any screws um, that are missing. Yeah, that can go away. Okay. What's next? We need to put this back. snap it back in place just in general and then we have several connectors to deal with here um, there are three here plus there's a keyboard plus there was a center screw that went here this screw actually helps hold the motherboard down so I'd advise putting that in before you bother with these connectors a flat tool like this, this is a soft metal pry tool, but a, a flat tool like this that, um, you know, you can flip the connectors up and down with is very, very helpful. Flip it up, push it in, flip it down. They are supposed to be zero insertion force connectors, so you shouldn't have to push real hard to get them in. I find that they don't quite sit right by themselves. So, it's not zero insertion force. You have to get them to fall into place. But it is much lower than, say, the uh, speaker connectors. Be real careful with these flippy things. It is easier than you want to know to break them off. Uh, there is a video that I made where I repaired one that I had accidentally flicked off but didn't break using a Canon camcorder that had a macro zoom feature. A, a cheap one, actually. Um, I don't have a digital microscope, but I sure did have that Canon camcorder. 
keyboard. Let's get our keyboard, the flat cable for the keyboard here. Let's get this flat cable put back. So flip this up. The piece of tape that's over it will make it harder to do it. But get it flipped up. And put the keyboard cable in. You might have to go a little diagonal with it. But get the keyboard cable in. You see the white line. It should generally line up from end to end here with this white line silk screen on the board. Flip this down and it'll lock your keyboard in place. Um, I always, always second guess myself on these keyboards. Which is better than just assuming everything is okay because you, if you check twice, it's generally better than checking once. Let's just be honest. Let's gently close it. Flip it back over. Oh, the desk is covered in crunchies. All right, so fan we took out. We can go ahead and put our wireless card back in here. I'll go ahead and put a keyboard screw in to tighten this up. I don't think it takes a long one anymore. Yeah, that feels like it's gonna bottom out. Let's use a short one just to be safe. Yeah, there we go. Nice and short. Now, wireless card in the slot. There we go. And yeah, there's the peg. Uh, where's our wireless card screw? It should be fairly short, but uh, I don't seem to have stored it anywhere separately. So just another generic short screw is probably all we need. Yeah, that's it. Let's go ahead and put our hard drive back in and reconnect the cable here. Come come on now. Yeah, it picked something up. Okay, come on, come on. Yeah. It can be a little hard to get it lined back up correctly, but you know, give it your best shot. You will eventually prevail. Let's go ahead and put this screw in here too because this long screw, these these long screws will help line things up a little better. Okay. During this phase, it's handy to kind of look around, see if we can find anything that's not where it should be. Let's go ahead and slide our optical drive back in place. And it took a relatively short screw, I believe. Yeah, yeah. One of these. Okay, now we've put this one and this one back. We've put this one back. So all the screws and the connectors that are under here appear to be back in place. We can actually go ahead and secure the bottom plate. Put it in like that. The tabs are here. Then there are those awful plastic clips all around it that bite in and two screws in the bottom holding it together alright okay uh, I used a short screw somewhere I wasn't supposed to because now I have too few of them here for this battery compartment area so what I'm going to do since I clearly made a mistake is I'm gonna put the screws around the battery connector which will ensure the battery connector is in the correct location relative to the uh, actual battery. Now, because of this being a, an HP G7 and because of the hinge issues that I'm worried about, I'm going to put screws in the hinge hole areas first. And I'm going to tighten them up fairly firmly because I am worried about these hinges disintegrating on the customer. So it's pretty important that, for example, these three screws be as tight as we can get them. All right. 
because this hinge is notoriously weak due to the heat sink here, the heat sink holes here, and then the heat sink holes here. Um, it's already starting to crack here, so we need to help that as much as we can. I don't want to epoxy this one if I can help it. Um, that's a bunch of extra work I don't want to do. I'm putting hinge screws in the other hinge now. Basically, we know that the hinges are a problem, so we need to tighten up the screws. Make sure that all the screws are installed and tightened in the hinge area before we put them anywhere else. Because that way, the stress on the hinges will not cause them to break the plastic apart as easily. Yeah, we can sacrifice screws from other parts of the computer. And that's what I'm going to do here. I have four left, so I'm going to put two on the corners. Because those are the most important parts. Alright, now I have two left. I know I want one here in the center. Because that's where your touch pad is. Um, let's see here. And I think I'm going to leave these two empty and put one here. And the reason I want to put one here instead of here is that the CD drive represents a big empty space. And this is one of the only screws that reinforces that empty space. So we'll go ahead and put the last screw here. I do have the option of going through my collection and finding more screws to fit. Um but I don't think that's really necessary. All right, now there is actually a bonus that I need to do. Um, I'm gonna have to undo a little bit of the work, but this computer is also due for a solid state drive upgrade. So this hard drive here, which I am just gonna pull up from the rubber this hard drive here is actually going to be removed and replaced with a solid state drive. Uh, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Anyway, I hope this has all been very helpful and educational, and I really appreciate you watching my videos. If this helped you, you know, the usual. Like, subscribe to my channel, uh, go to my website and read my silly posts and look at my photos and all that. But you know, if this has helped you, let me know in the comments. That really makes my day when I get a comment and people are like, Yeah, you saved me money. You, you helped me out. I love getting that kind of stuff. Take care. Have a wonderful day.